The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone and I hope you're doing well. Um, actually on my end I'm doing pretty alright. Um, I'm currently working on a brand new novel, a novel that I wasn't even planning on working on and I'm really really excited about the progress and I just can't wait to see what else is going to unfold in this story. Right, so I've got some tea and some books and if you're ready let's do this. So the first book I learned about through the meditation app Insight Timer, where one of the meditation guides read a poem from this book. And it moved me so much that I immediately tried to find it at one of the libraries. And thankfully, the Arapaho Library District did have it. And this is Instructions for Traveling West, Poems by Joy Sullivan. She was, is, quite the poet and when I read about her story and how she came to write these poems I thought wow that just kind of gave me like a vitamin b12 shot to my whole life so let me read the little dust jacket for you let's see so okay begins Joy Sullivan's instructions for traveling west a lush debut collect this is debut it's this is pretty um Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pretty impressive for this. A lush debut collection that examines what happens when we leave home and leap into the deep unknown. Mid-pandemic, Sullivan left the man she planned to marry, sold her house, quit her corporate job, and drove west. This dazzling collection tells that story as it illuminates the questions haunting us all. What possible futures lie on the horizon? What happens when we heed the call of furious reinvention? A book for anyone flinging themselves into fresh starts, Instructions for Traveling West grapples with loss, loneliness, and belonging. These poems teach us that naming our desire is profound alchemy. Each of us holds the power to set our own course forward. Expansive and heart opening, exquisite in their specific, specificity, <laughs> specificity yeah, galvanizing in their scope. The poems and instructions for traveling west speak to the longing that lives within us all. They remind us, as Sullivan says, joy is not a trick. And about Joy Sullivan, she received an MA in poetry from Miami University and has served as the poet in residence for the Wexner Center for the Arts. She has guest lectured in classrooms from Stanford University to Florida International University and is the founder of Sustenance, a community designed to help writers revitalize and nourish their craft. Read her thoughts on the creative life in her Substack newsletter, Necessary Salt. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, this collection of poetry blew me away. And it all started with that one poem. It's like that six degrees of separation, you know? And in fact, let me read the poem that started it all. It, it is called Instructions for Traveling West. First, you must realize you're homesick for all the lives you're not living. Then you must commit to the road and the rising loneliness, to the sincere thrill of coming apart. Divorce yourself from routine and control. Instead, find a desert and fall in. Take the trail that promises a view. Get lost. Break your toes. Bruise your knees. Keep going. Watch a purple meadow quiver, get still, pet trail dogs, buy the hat, run out of gas, befriend strangers, knight yourself every morning for your newborn courage, give grief her own lullaby, drink whiskey beside a hundred year old cactus, honor everything, pray to something unnameable, fall for someone impractical, Reacquaint yourself with desire in all her slender hands. Bear beauty for as long as you are able, and if you spot a sunning warbler glowing like a prism, remind yourself, joy is not a trick. When I heard those words, something deep inside of me stirred, and I had to read more by Joy Sullivan. Let me read one more. Let's see. Um, what's a good one? Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's do just random. This one is titled 
buttercream. I was raised in a house that believed in the end times. By age three, I was convinced Jesus would return before my fourth birthday, and I wouldn't get my golden-haired Barbie and the chocolate cake with tufts of buttercream. I bargained with God. I will be good. I will not free the corn parrot from her cage. I will not wake my mother during siesta. Delay your coming, Lord, just until after the party. Heaven can't be as sweet as buttercream. I grew up and the rapture never came. I shed God, or at least tried, but I still found myself bargaining through the years. Let me just have my first kiss. Let me just get into grad school. Let me just meet the love of my life. Let me just see the ocean again. These days, I don't fear God's return in a cloud of smoke and fire. I don't pray. But when the love for this world gets too big and achy inside me, I still catch myself begging. Give us our kisses, our fingers in the dirt, our sweat and our sweetness. Give us time, please, just a little longer in these bones. Instructions for Traveling West by Joy Sullivan does receive five pots of tea from Viridian Tea House. If I can grab my notes. <laughs> Five pots of tea for instructions on traveling west. This was an excellent collection of poems that really, they make you think. And with a lot of these for myself, I turned inward. And I asked a lot of hard questions of myself. And when the answer came, I accepted it for what it was. So, Joy Sullivan, if you're watching, thank you so much for this book. This really... This book is one of those books that, that comes across in your life and it makes you pause instead of being on autopilot and blinders on. For just a moment, the blinders are taken off and you're able to see. You're able to see everything around you and more importantly, what's going on in here. So many thanks for this book. Thank you. And now the second book is this one author that I really, 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 really do like. But sadly enough, I've not read all of her work, which I need to change that. So many thanks to Denver Public Library for having a copy of this book. And I did not realize that I had actually read another book in the same scenario or in the same setting. So when I started reading it, I thought, wait, this seems really familiar. And I was like, aha, this is familiar. And this is Joanne Harris different class. And now let me read the dust jacket for you. New York Times bestselling author Joanne Harris returns with her darkest and most unsettling book yet. She, so this is the author that wrote the book Chocolat. I've never read that before, but she's really good with the psychological thriller. She's really good about getting into your head and just staying there and playing with the gray matter. And then before you know it, the book is over and you're like, what just happened. So anyway, every so often there's a boy who doesn't fit the mold, a troublemaker, a boy with darkness inside. After 30 years at St. Oswald's Grammar School, Latin master Roy Straitley has seen all kinds of boys come and go. Each class has its own clowns, rebels, and underdogs, all who hold a special place in the old teacher's heart. But for all the diamonds in the rough that Straitly has polished, there is one boy who continues to haunt his dreams even 20 years later. At, as insolvency and academic failure threaten the very foundations of St. Oswald's, a new headmaster steps in to save the venerable school, bringing with him modern technology, sharp suits, and even girls. Ooh. While Straitly does his sardonic best to resist this leap into the future, a shadow from his past begins to stir once more. The headmaster's arrival awakens memories of a decades-old scandal that once rocked the dusty corridors of St. Oswald's, and with it, the boy who started it all, a boy capable of terrible things. And about Joanne Harris, uh, she's the New York Times bestselling author of Chocolat, and the thriller Gentlemen and Players, that, that was the book that is tied into this one, uh, which was shortlisted for the Edgar Award for Best Novel. 
She has since written acclaimed novels in diverse genres, including historical fiction, fantasy, and psychological suspense. She is an honorary fellow of St. Catherine's College, Cambridge, and, when, and was awarded an MBE by the Queen. Harris taught in a boys grammar school for 15 years before becoming a full-time writer. She lives with her family in Yorkshire, plays bass in a band first form when she was 16, writes in a shed in her garden, spends far too much time online, and occasionally dreams of faking her own death and going to live in Hawaii. So yes, she is quite the, the, the mistress of psychological suspense and different class is, was just amazingly terrifying because as I read the book, I was, she wrote it in such a way where you're focused on this one particular character and you're like, you're a really messed up young man. You're so messed up. You're so messed up. And going back and forth between 20 years ago and the present, you're so caught up in the story. You know it's going to be this particular character. But then she lets one tiny detail slip and it just throws apart the intricate wall you had just built, the structure. The structure was flimsy to begin with and it crumbles to dust. And you're left going, I did not see that coming at all. But then when you take the time to go back and think about what you read, slowly the pieces start to really come together way more solid than before. And you're left with a chilling and terrifying psychological story. And again, I, I, I really want to read Shock a lot just to kind of deal with her writing from a different genre. But in terms of the psychological thriller, she's fantastic. So Joanne Harris, different class, does receive five pots of tea from Viridian Tea House. And also one of the reasons why I love this book and the other one, Gentlemen and Players, is so I attended prep school. I did a summer session at Phillips Academy Andover. And many years later, I just had this gravitational pull toward any kind of book that dealt with prep school. And I jokingly tell people, any book that you've read that deals with prep school, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. Um, and in fact, okay, I'll talk a little bit more. So the manuscript I'm currently working on is a fictitious version of my time in prep school. Um, I'm going to fudge some things, of course, but a lot of it is what I went through. And so it's not going to be from a student's perspective, but from a teacher's perspective. So anyway, it's really nice to just kind of delve into those memories and, you know, reading books like different class. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I remember this and I remember that and I remember that person or that teacher or whatever. So but yes, if you are into psychological suspense, if you're into books that deal with prep schools and the various characters that inhabit said school, you definitely need to read Different Class by Joanne Harris. So once again, Joanne Harris, Different Class, and Joy Sullivan, Instructions for Traveling West, Poetry. Check out these two books as soon as you can. You will not regret it. So getting to the tea portion, um, not really a review, just talking about a tea that I really like, and that is my favorite, favorite company, Celestial Seasonings Tension Tamer. Now, I'm a really big fan of their sleepy time, you know, the little sleepy bear that's on the on the packaging. And it's really nice, you know, if you drink that before going to bed, it's kind of soothes you, you know, you, ha you have your book and you got your tea and it's, it's nice. But Tension Tamer, I will admit when I'm feeling stressed or my anxiety is kind of rising a little bit, Drinking a cup of this really allows me to calm down and it does tame the tension. And so the ingredients of this, uh, let's see, uh, Eleuthero, peppermint, cinnamon, ginger, chamomile, lemongrass, licorice, catnip, tilia flowers, natural lemon flavor with other natural flavors, hops, and vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. And the blend master's notes, the soothing blend begins with 
Eleuthero. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Eleuthero, an Asian herb popular for centuries because of the sense of calm and well-being it imparts. We've added cooling peppermint, spicy ginger, and tangy lemon flavor to create an uplifting and restorative blend that can bring harmony to any moment of your day. So that's one of the really cool things about Tension Tamer is that, you know, it's sleepy time. When I drink it, my body is like, okay, we're going to go to sleep in like 30 minutes to an hour. But with Tension Tamer, I can drink this all day. And while it does make me mild and relaxed, it's not going to make me fall asleep if I'm working on tea or writing or doing something important. So if you're looking for a nice herbal tisane to just take the edge off but not zonk you out, Ten Tension Tamer by Celestial Seasonings. So for me to you, a lovely cup of Tension Tamer. And just like that, what an absolutely delicious and <sighs> relaxing herbal to sane. That really is excellent. That really is. So before I send you off back to your corners of the world, let's do a water or tea breathing meditation. If you're new to this, um, welcome. And we're just going to focus on our breathing for just a couple of seconds. You know, let's face it, we all have busy lives. We all do. And sometimes it's really nice to just pause and take a few seconds to breathe. Like we do it automatically. We don't even think about it. So this is my way of saying, let's just pay attention to the breath for a little bit. Um, find yourself in a comfortable position in a place where you, you will not be disturbed. Make sure that you have a glass of water or a cup of your favorite tea. We're not going to focus on any chants or any visions or anything like that. We're just going to breathe. Now, if you if you find that your mind gets decides to wander off, it's okay. It's normal. You just pause whatever you're thinking about, label it as thinking, and allow the thought to go on its way. Just return to the breath. So this is no time to beat yourself up or think harshly because you can't chant and, and meditate properly. I mean, I've been meditating for years and my mind still wanders off and I'm gentle with it. I just bring my mind right back to the breath and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. It's like, yeah, you did. It's all good. So if you're ready, let's do this. <clears throat> And now let's end this breathing meditation with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or allow your eyes to come back into focus. And now let's have a sip of your water or tea. Mm, absolutely delicious. So that's all I have for today. Many thanks to the authors Joanne Harris and Joy Sullivan for their wonderful tomes. For the good folks at Celestial Seasonings, 30 minutes away in Boulder, thank y'all so much for your diverse tea blends. It's just, I, I love what y'all do. I really do. And finally, to all of y'all for watching these videos, I, I always say it and I really do mean it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this one tea seller talk about books that she enjoys and tea blends and all kinds of stuff. Thank you very much. So as always, take care of yourself and each other, raise your teacup high, 
And remember that to drink tea is to enjoy life. I will see y'all really soon. Bye for now.